Hey guys and welcome back to our channel. My name is Chelsea and I'm one of the directors here at the Institute for Marine Research. Today I'm going to be guiding you through IMR's long-term reef monitoring project, what our research questions are and how we hope this project can actually give back to our local community. Now, it's pretty common knowledge that the world's coral reefs are being severely degraded by the activities of humans and the need to actually reduce local threats in order to offset increasing global pressures is now widely recognised. Major anthropogenic risks include, firstly, the reduced growth of reef building corals due to their high sensitivity to increasing seawater temperatures. Secondly, we're talking about ocean acidification, as well as deteriorating water quality, over-exploitation of key marine species, destructive fishing, as well as the direct devastation to coastal ecosystems as a result of unsustainable coastal development. These anthropogenic risks unfortunately also interact with other large-scale disturbances, such as intensifying storms, or population outbreaks of the crown of thorn starfish. Regional policies are no longer able to protect our reefs from global scale devastation as a result of climate change induced heat stress and intensifying storms. Efforts are therefore shifting towards the management of regional and localized threats to actually increase reef resilience. In order to understand reef resilience, and the effectiveness of the localised reduction of anthropogenic stresses, we must first understand what actually determines ecosystem trajectories in the area. At IMR, we do this through our long-term reef monitoring project. As of February 2019, the Institute for Marine Research established their long-term reef monitoring project along the shallow inshore reef of Negros Oriental, within the municipality of Darwin, right here in the Philippines. 19 core sites were selected for both seasonal and annual monitoring. Now these 19 core sites, they do vary in benthic composition and fish community structure, as well as accounting for the zoning history of the municipality's no-take marine protected areas. These 19 core sites include 50 metre transects, which are laid out parallel to the reef crest at both 5 and 10 metre depth ranges. These surveys are conducted biannually in order to account for any seasonal variation in our data, with our dry season going from February to July and our wet season running from August to January. We have three key research goals that we aim to accomplish from this project. Firstly, we hope to understand how the benthic composition influences fish community structure. That is to say, we hope to understand how what makes up the sea floor affects what fish is present and at what maturity it is present. We also hope to document any key disturbances that are affecting our reef community, from things such as the Corallovis crown of thorns, Drupella, which is a Corallovis sea snail, we also look at coral bleaching, coral disease, and other impacts such as trash. We also hope to document the effects of changing temperatures, pH, dissolved oxygen, and changing light regimes on Darwin's fringing reef. So what do we do with all of our data? Well, first of all, we publish all of our work in status and outlook reports, which are both delivered and presented to policymakers within our local government unit. Within these reports, we can highlight areas of concern with regards to unsustainable reef practices that's occurring within the municipality. And finally, all of our work does become published in peer-reviewed journals uh, that can be accessed by the wider scientific community. To see all of our current updates and reports, please check out our website. Uh, you can find all the results under the Our Results section on the website. I'll catch up with you guys next time to explain in depth our survey methodology, which is the methodology that we actually use to study the reef in our long-term monitoring project. And also we will be uploading some how-to videos using our analytical softwares. All right, 
Thanks for watching. Leave your comments below and we'll catch you next time.